Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you guys all about the 20 five star predictions that I have for 2020. So I was inspired to do this video by Brit from Basically Brit. I'll leave a link in my description down below to go watch her video that she did on this topic, I think a couple of months ago. But I was really inspired to do this specifically for books that are already on my shelves. That's one of my biggest goals for 2020 is to read a lot of my backlist titles and a lot of the books that are actually on my physical TBR. I feel like new releases come out and I either buy them or read arcs of them and I just never get to any of my backlist. So I thought it would be fitting to do a prediction video for 2020 on the books that I already have on my shelves and I am going to make an effort to read all 20 of these books hopefully do a follow-up next December and tell you guys what I thought of all of these so these are in no particular order and they're sort of a random assortment of genres but I'm excited to share them all with you so let's get into it also I have my little co-star in the back uh sorry if he distracts you <laughs> but anyway the first book on my anticipated five star reads is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake I don't think I've heard anyone read this book less than five stars I know Kat from Paperback Dreams read this book this year and really enjoyed it and I like that it is short young adult contemporary and apparently it's very hard hitting it deals with rape and what to do when your sibling or someone you really care about is the perpetrator of a crime like this you know it's hard because you can't side with your sibling but you still love them so I'm curious to see how this book handles such a hard topic and there's just something about it that really leads me to believe it's going to be a five star read I've read another Ashley Herring Blake book I think I even either gave that one four or five stars this one just really feels like something that's going to stick with me so I'm really excited to get to this and I really think this is going to be five stars. The next book on my list was also inspired by someone else. Um, I know Heather from Aphrodite Reads just read this and it is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is a book that has been on my shelves the absolute longest. I don't know what year this came out. Let me check. I got this in 2016. So I've had this book for a very, very long time and I just haven't gotten around to it because the idea of an Alice in Wonderland Queen of Hearts sort of retelling doesn't excite me too terribly much, but she said that this was really beautiful and she liked the audiobook of it. So I actually have the audiobook checked out from my library right now. Excited to get to this. Like I said, it's a retelling and I just, I have a feeling that this is going to be five stars and I have a feeling it's going to be one of those books that's been on my TBR for too long that ends up being five stars and I end up kicking myself for not reading it sooner. So I'm hoping that's the case with this book. The next book on my list is a book by an author that I tried this year and really enjoyed and it is Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. I ended up reading Dig earlier this year for my taste test video for Kayla and I really, really enjoyed enjoyed Dig. It was super good and super different than anything that I had ever read, so I decided I would pick up a few of A.S. King's backlist titles. I think I have three or four of her books now, and I'm just, I'm excited about this one in particular. I read, I think, 20 pages of this when I checked it out from my library in, like, September, and I really connected with our main character and her relationship with her mother. I really like, th there's a recurring theme here. <laughs> I end up really liking books where the mother-daughter relationship is shaky, or there are problems because it's something that I can relate to. I just, I really, really really connected with this particular iteration of mother-daughter relationship issues. So I'm hoping that the more I read of this, when I pick it back up, it, it's going to make it a five star. I just, I have a feeling that I'm going to love this. Author I love, subject matter I love, probably five stars. The next book is one that I think I'm going to give five stars primarily because everybody else seems to give this book five stars, but also I think the subject matter is something that I will personally connect with. And it is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. The only thing I know about this particular book is that it is about a set of twins and we, I think, get insight into their lives at one point where they're really close. There's a time jump and now they're no longer close and we're trying to kind of unravel what happened. And that sort of thing usually really works for me. I also really just like books about family relationships, especially young adult hard-hitting contemporaries. So I just, I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy this. I haven't read any of Jandy Nelson's other books. I don't actually know if I like Jandy Nelson. <laughs> I don't know what else she's written, but uh, I'm really excited to give this one a try. I really do think this is going to be a five-star read for me. This is something I'll probably get to in the summer because it just feels like a summer read. Maybe it's the spine that's influencing me, but but I think this is going to be a five star. The next book is one that I got recently, and it is a book that I've been seeing kind of low-key being recommended to a lot of people. I know Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads really enjoyed this, and it is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I don't know that much about this one, except for, again, it's got that sort of family drama aspect to it. This one, I think, is a bleaker tale, and it definitely is set around the sea, and I think maybe our main character, Violet, some of her family members die, and that's kind of part of the storyline of this. I don't really want to know much about this book going in. I like to go in blind, especially with contemporary, but I think this is going to be something that I really will give five stars. I tried to read a book that had a similar premise to this one a while ago that I didn't connect with, 
life, but I desperately wanted to. It was another family drama set by the sea, grief as a theme, and I'm hoping this one sort of will fill the slot of that book since that one didn't work out for me. I really wish I could remember the name. If I can, I'll insert like a picture of it, whatever, but I think this one's going to really do it for me. I think this is going to be a five star. Me and Chelsea usually have fairly similar tastes, especially in young adult contemporary, so excited about this one. Next book, <laughs> like I said, mother-daughter relationships, definitely a theme in books that I think will be five stars for me, mostly because I think sometimes reading about issues you might have in your own life can be very cathartic. This book is called Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman, and I know this book is about a girl whose mother is white, whose father I believe is Japanese. Her father dies and her mom is not coping with the death of her father very well, or maybe he, maybe they're divorced. I'm not sure. I just know that this book is really about our main character struggling with her relationship with her mom and the racism that her mom has towards the Japanese half of her daughter. I know that the identity issues in this book are apparently explored excellently, and I did read another book by Kemi Don Bowman, which I didn't really love, but I think that I liked her writing a lot. I liked the way that she dealt with grief and human emotion. I just personally couldn't relate to a lot of the themes that were discussed. I think the themes in this, the mother-daughter relationship discussed, is going to be something I really connect with. So the next book on my list is one that I've kind of been putting off for a while, not for any particular reason, but it is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I read The Hate You Give earlier this year and I absolutely adored it. Also regretted putting that one off for so long because I gave it five stars, but from everything I've heard, a lot of people like On the Come Up, but not quite as much as The Hate You Give. I think I'm going to be the exception to that rule because the themes that are explored in this book are themes that are going to probably connect with me a little bit more. Our main character, I think her name is Brie. Yeah, she is an up-and-coming rapper. She's trying to get out of her neighborhood and become successful. And something about someone striving for success and just a really creative mind, that just connects with me a little bit more. And I personally listen to a lot of hip-hop and rap, and I know that there are raps like in the text. So I'm just really excited to get to this one, and I really can't see this being anything less than a five-star read for me. Next book is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is a book that I've been meaning to get to for a very long time. I'm hoping that putting it on this list will encourage me to read it and or force me to read it. I mean, everybody that I know has either loathed this book or given it five stars. And since I personally think I'm not that hard to please, especially when it comes to fantasy, this book is going to work for me. I don't really like thief novels, but I really like assassin novels. So I think this one's going to work for me very well. I also know that there's like an assassin school component and that's really badass. I just I think this is gonna work for me. The intro to this book, I did end up reading 50 pages of this a while ago, really worked for me. So despite the footnotes and maybe sort of like strange writing style, I do think this book is gonna be five stars for me. The next book on my list is one that has also kind of been there for a while and it is I think the last book on this author's backlist that I haven't gotten to and it is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. This book is set during Christmas time and it is about a woman reconnecting with her husband over a landline telephone that apparently has magical properties and I have really enjoyed enjoyed a lot of Rainbow Rowell's adult contemporaries. I say that. I think the only other adult contemporary that she's written is Attachments. I gave that book five stars. I love her adult contemporary style. In general, I like Rainbow Rowell's writing, but I'm really excited to get to this one. I think this one was written before Attachments, but regardless, I think this would be really fun. Maybe I'll get to this before the end of the year since it is a shorter book and it is set around Christmas time, but there's just something about uh, um, adult married couples reconnecting that really works for me. I didn't know that previously, but I just read The Romance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams, and that one really worked for me. I don't love second chance romances, but when it is between two people that are already together, it tends to really work for me. So I'm thinking this is going to be five stars. The next book on my list is sort of a weird one. It is The Black Witch by Lori Forrest. And I know this book had a lot of controversy surrounding it when it first came out because the main character in this book has racist tendencies. And the racism in this book is not hidden, but it is put in a different way than in our world. It's more like species racism in, in this particular setting. And that was why uh, a lot of people felt that it was controversial. Other people kind of kicked back on that and said that the character grows and that the whole point of the story is that she's racist at the start and that she ends up becoming less racist over the course of this three book series. So it's still kind of controversial, I think, but I'm excited to get to this because I really like magical school settings. Apparently it's kind of Harry Potter-esque with the magical school, but also I really like when the sort of chosen one trope and whenever like typical fantasy tropes are subverted, like Carry On really worked for me, not because it was like dreary fan fiction, which it did, you know, it worked for me in that regard, but it, it worked for me because a lot of the things that were kind of unaddressed in Harry Potter became addressed in Carry On, and I really liked that. And I don't think this is going to do the exact same thing, but I think having more discussions 
about the things that didn't work, tropes and in addressing some things that like books like Harry Potter don't do. I think this might be interesting, uh, a book that kind of explores racism in a fantasy setting. I don't know, it could be good, it could be horrible, but I kind of have a feeling this is gonna be five stars. So, so this next book is one that I really meant to get to in 2019, and I'm really disappointed that I didn't. It is All American Muslim Girl by Nadine Jolie Courtney. I ended up getting this, I think, at a Fierce Reads event at BEA. It was, you tell them your favorite book and they'll give you a book that they think has a similar vibe. So they gave me this one and I'm really excited about it because I really like reading about religious experiences that are different than my own. And this one in particular really appealed to me because it is about a Muslim American teen. She is white and she has a complicated relationship with her religious affiliation. She is not necessarily a practicing Muslim, but she definitely has ties to the cultural aspect, which is something I personally relate to as a Catholic who doesn't really practice the Catholic faith. And Allie is struggling because her boyfriend's father is a kind of racist, shock jock kind of dude, and she actually hasn't told her boyfriend that she is Muslim. So I'm sure that the main conflict in this is about religious identity and sticking up for other people who might not necessarily have the same privilege that you have. I'm really, I think this is going to be great. All of the reviews that I've read of this book have been excellent, and this is one of those books that I think is not talked about enough. I it did think it came out in November, but I, I haven't heard pretty much anyone talk about it. But I'm really excited about this, and I think it's going to be a five-star read for me. This is going to be a different perspective. I have read a few books this year with Muslim main characters, but most of the characters that I've read have been very overtly religious, and I think it's going to be interesting to see a slightly different take on that. I really, I think this is going to be five stars for me. I hope it is, because I'd love to give you guys kind of like more underrated young adult fiction recommendations. Okay, this next book. This is one that I didn't think that I initially would like, but the more that I hear people talking about this author's sophomore novel, I get more excited for the debut. And it is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. I know that other people, I feel like the overwhelming opinion when this first came out was that it was disappointing, and now people are saying, oh, it's actually really good. I don't know who to believe, but <laughs> the author went to my university, and I think the characters in this book are, technically go to my university. I mean, they go to college in Austin, and there's only really one college in Austin, so that's appealing to me. I liked my university, so I'm hoping that this is set in my university. I like university settings for books. I don't know, am I just a slut for UT Austin? Yeah, but I think this is going to be good. I like that it is about two, like, struggling college students, and I, I just, I think this is going to work for me. I don't know. I, I'm thinking it's five stars. This is one that, that could be, like, a one star, or it could be a five star, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's five star. The next book on my list is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a book that one of my friends really enjoys, and she and I have very similar taste when it comes to fantasy books. So I think this one, I think this one's going to be a five star. It is about a girl in a Russian setting, and I think that her family stops worshipping the gods in Russia and ends up dealing with the wrath of one of these gods. So it seems intriguing. I know that it's set in kind of a snowy setting, and I've really been gravitating more towards the descriptive, flowery, boring side of fantasy lately, so I think this could definitely fit the bill for me. And it's just a book that's been on my shelves forever, so I'm hoping that by like adding it to this list that I will get to it and enjoy it. I have the audiobook checked out right now, actually, so this is one that I probably will be talking about next year. The next book on my list is one that I think some people really like and some people really don't like and I'm just going to gamble and assume that I'm going to really enjoy it. It is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a historical fiction book about a girl who I think does autopsies or something crazy, like with her uncle. And anyway, she gets roped into, or not roped into, but she's really interested in solving the mystery of Jack the Ripper. She ends up teaming up with a guy named Thomas Cresswell, I do believe. And this is just about their love story and about them solving crime. Most complaints that I've heard about this book and this book series in general is that it's very romance heavy and not very mystery solving heavy, which I think is going to be okay for me. I know that the Charlotte Holmes series, for instance, definitely had that sort of vibe. That one is not a historical setting, but the characters are really what drew me in. It wasn't really the mystery solving because let's be real, those books, like the mystery aspect's not great, but like the character relationships are. And I'm hoping that's going to be the case for the series and this book in particular. So I think this is going to be a five-star read. The next book is a book that I have been putting off for a while for no real good reason. I've read almost all of Holly Black's young adult titles, but I think the only one that I have yet to still read is The Darkest Part of the Forest. And 
I'm still kind of hungover from Queen of Nothing and I was looking at my shelves and I was like why have I not read this yet? This is definitely going to be a five star read for me. Everybody that I have seen rate this absolutely adores it. It's a standalone set in the Fae world and there are some cameos in the Folk of the Air trilogy. I would love to get back into this world. It's slightly different obviously. It's like not set at the same court but it definitely has some like I said overlapping characters. I heard that there is an LGBT romance. I think it's a male male romance in this so I really I can't see this being anything less than five stars for me. I love Holly Black's writing so I'm excited to give this one a try and like this is one that I am definitely thinking is going to be five stars. Now we're down to the last four books. The next one on my list is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. This is about a teen who is I think mute. I don't know if it's selective or not and a deaf teen and their relationship. I haven't read a lot of books that have deaf and or mute characters and I just feel like this is going to be a really good one. I know that this is a lot of people's favorite book. I think this is one of Natasha from My Reading is Odd, one of her favorite books and I just I don't know I have a good feeling about it. It's been on my shelves a really long time and I think if there's any YA contemporary in this same vein on my shelves this is going to be the one that really does it for me. This is definitely going to be the five star out of all of those so excited to get to this one. The next one is one that I got for my birthday and it is Black Iris by Elliot Wake. I loved Unteachable by Elliot Wake. I thought that book was phenomenal and I don't think Black Iris will be any exception. I think a lot of people ended up liking Black Iris more than Unteachable but it has a female female relationship. I, I really don't know much more about this book and I don't really want to know more going into it. I just heard it's kind of twisty. It's got a thrillery sort of aspect to it and I think once it gets into kind of the fall season next year this is going to be one that I'm just like dying to get to. <sighs> The next one, it's like I kind of regret putting this on my list, but I am forcing myself to read this at some point next year, hopefully like January, February. It's The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This bitch thick as fuck. I think she's she's definitely over a thousand pages. Let's see how much. Oh no, she's exactly basically a thousand and one pages. I think if any adult fantasy is going to work for me, it's going to be a Brandon Sanderson novel. I do really well with well fleshed out worlds and magic systems in my fantasy. I know that the characters are also really well developed and overall I just heard that Brandon Sanderson tends to write stories that are very accessible even if they are thick as fuck. I think if any adult fantasy on my shelves has the potential to be one that I really really enjoy in 2020 it's going to be this one. I am about to start Mistborn The Final Empire so I'm hoping I like that one. I'm hoping that one sets me up for <laughs> excitement and intrigue. As of right now I'm just scared but I really do think this is going to be a five star read. I hope that it lives up to my expectation of it. And then my 20th five star prediction for 2020 is the Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. This is a book that a lot of my friends have been reading lately and Zoe from Zoe Reads recommends all the time and I I just think this book is going to do it for me. I read, like I said, Dig by S. King earlier in the year. This one seems like it's got a similar feel to it. It's an adult fiction novel following, I think, four siblings. They know when they're going to die, I think. That's the whole premise of this book and they try to kind of live their lives best as they can until they die or something like that. <laughs> I don't want to know much more about it. Family dramas, family sagas tend to work very well for me, especially in this sort of regard. I don't like generational stories. I like when things are kind of all at one, told at one level. So I just, I think this is going to really work for me. And I mean, if Zoe likes it a lot, I can't anticipate me not liking it just as much. So I think this is going to be a five star read. And that is it. Those are the 20 books that I anticipate being five stars in 2020. I can't believe 2020 is a thing. That's just, it seems so close and yet so far away. I am really excited to read all of these books. I'll check in with you guys next December and we can see if I have read all 20 of these and if they are actually five star predictions, but that's going to be it for me. I love you guys so much and until next time.